So in this video, we will finally begin actual analysis of transmission lines. This is a more qualitative topic at first, so I won't do any examples at first, but I'll do some examples for later topics. I will go through the following topics. Number one, what is, and I'll abbreviate transmission line as TL, what is a transmission line? Number two, non-idealities of transmission lines. Number three, different types of transmission lines. And last, how to model transmission lines. Now, actually for the third topic, I'll just skim over it. I'll probably make a video later and go more in depth, but it's not really that important um, for right now. Um, I'll, so let's begin. So in low frequency circuits, circuit elements are usually connected by wires. In a general E&M physics class and even introductory circuits classes, more than likely you treated the wires between elements as ideal wires without resistance. Um, you probably had a feeling that this was a idealization, and if you did, you would be correct, as these are actually transmission lines, which are any structures that transmit a signal or energy between two points. Um, in this video, we'll get into the specifics of transmission lines. Now, when is it okay to treat circuit wires as ideal? Now, suppose that we have a circuit. There's a sinusoidal voltage source, and we'll call this node A and there's another node B. This is a RC circuit and call this node B prime and this node A prime. And let's say that this wire in between is of length L. And we can say Let's label the voltage source VG, and we can say that the voltage source VG outputs a voltage of V naught cosine omega t. Omega is the angular uh, frequency of the voltage. And this is also equal to VA A prime. Now, assuming the electric field or the current travels through the wires at approximately the speed of light, then the voltage across the resistor and capacitor, uh, which we'll call VBB, will be delayed by a certain time because the wave takes time to propagate along the transmission line or the ideal wire. We don't know it, um, if we're going to treat it as um, a transmission line yet. Now, we know that from physics class, signals can only travel at maximum at the speed of light, so it takes some time to propagate down. Now, what is that time? Now, it's dependent upon the length of the wire, and we can say that the time delay is equal to L over C. And it's in units of whatever time C is which is usually, usually seconds. Now to find the voltage between the resistor and capacitor VBB prime, we can replace the T in the VAA prime expression with T minus LC, this time delay. And I'll write this here. We, we get V naught cosine of omega times T minus L over C. Kind of ran out of room, but you should be able to see that. This is T minus LC. Now this may be a little strange to you at first. Um, if you've only taken a introductory circuits class, you always assumed that these wires were ideal, so these two voltages at A and B were equal. In fact, um, this is not the case. It's just that when the wires are short enough, the speed of light or the speed of the electric field travels at such a high speed that it's um, basically instantaneous. But in this class, we are treating these wires as long enough to have a time delay between the voltages. 
Now, we can write this VBB prime expression in a more useful form. I'll write it down here. Get VBB prime is equal to V naught. All we're doing is multiplying the omega n. And we get omega t minus a phase angle change. Now what is this phase angle? You can just find it from multiplying in the omega, but it'd be omega l over c. Now this phi phase shift is the key factor when determining whether transmission line effects can be ignored. Now to make this uh, more clear, how we determine whether to ignore or not ignore the transmission line effects, we can re rewrite it in this form. Now, we can rewrite it a second time actually to get 2 pi L over lambda, where we just um, combine the F over C term. Now, what we look at when we determine whether transmission line effects can be ignored is this term right here. L over lambda, the length of the wire over the wavelength. Now, generally, when the L over lambda term is less than 0 0.01, um, I'll write it over here. When L over lambda is less than 0 0.01, we can ignore transmission line effects because this L over lambda directly determines the magnitude of the phase shift and if it's less than 0 0.01 then the phase shift is small enough so that we can um, treat these voltages as instantaneous. Now besides phase change there are actually two other line effects that need to be considered which are power loss and dispersive effects. Now power loss is pretty obvious where energy is dispersed across a transmission line. The dispersive effect however, refers to the distortion of signals. Now, for example, if we were sending a square wave like this down our transmission line, we know from Fourier analysis um, that it's simply a combination of many sinusoidal waves, all of which have different frequencies. Now, from the phase change expression, we'll look at this one this middle one. We can see that there's a direct dependence um, of phase change upon frequency. Now if these different components have different frequencies then each component of the square wave would move at a different speed along the transmission line. Now if these transmission lines are long enough um, we'll actually start to see distortion of our signal and our signal will actually begin to look like something like this. So now that we have a good background on transmission lines we can begin to learn how to model them. Now first we can introduce the main types of transmission lines. There are two types TEM transmission lines and higher order transmission lines. TEM stands for transverse electromagnetic. Um, I won't write that down, but um, what it implies is that, what it means is that um, TEM lines have electric and magnetic fields orthogonal to the direction of signal propagation. Higher order lines um, in include optical fibers and other stuff, but initially we'll just examine TEM lines since they're more common and easier to analyze. Now there are numerous different types of TEM lines. Um, put up a diagram um, to show the different kinds. Um, initially, we'll, however, we'll just look at the coaxial two-line and parallel plate TEM lines. Um, so how do we analyze these? Well, we'll create an equivalent circuit, or uh, as it's usually called, a lump circuit model. Um, this is similar to the Thevenin Norton equivalence technique that um, you used in your introductory circuits class. The circuit model we use looks like the following. So for any segment of transmission line of length delta z, 
we'll have something like this. Now as you can see there are four main parameters in our model. Uh, we have this R prime, L prime, G prime, and C prime. Now notice that these um, are these are actually called the characteristic values of our transmission lines. Um, notice that they're multiplied by delta Z which is the length of the segment um, that we chose. That means that each of these character characteristic values are actually per meter. So for example R prime would be ohms per meter. This is just, just something to keep in mind. This will matter in later derivations of the telegrapher equations for example. Um, now you'll notice that there's a G prime that might look foreign to you. G uh, stands for conductance, which is 1 over R. So G equals 1 over R. Now what does this actually represent? This, for example, in a coaxial line, we have um, a inner conductor and a outer conductor. There is some sort of dielectric in between. Now this conductance uh, represents the ability for charges to actually cross the dielectric into the other conductor. So um, this actually um, make some physical sense in the diagram since you have it sort of bridging the gap between our two transmission lines forward and backwards and the capacitance is the capacitance of the dielectric in between and the inductance and the resistance are self-explanatory now you might be wondering how do I calculate these well, luckily for us, there are pre-made equations that are available to us. Um, I'll erase this diagram and uh, make room for another one. Now this table gives us equations for each characteristic parameter of coaxial, two-wire, and parallel plate lines. Now, these are the first ones that we'll study. And although it might seem that these just came out of thin air and that might kind of bother you, but don't worry, we'll derive these in later videos. These two tables go hand in hand. You can match the parameters on, on um, table 2, 1 to this transmission line picture diagram. Now, there might be some variables, however, that, are, that look foreign to you. For example, RS. RS actually stands for the surface resistance of our transmission line, and it's equal to the square root of pi F permeability over sigma C. These are both um, sub C. Um, notice that if we have a subscript C, the variable refers to our conductor. And if there is no subscript C, then it is talking about our dielectric. And one thing to notice in this surface resistance uh, formula is that it depends on the frequency. Now, if you also if you didn't know, um, sigma actually represents the conductivity of our conductor. Just abbreviate it. Lastly, all TEM transmission lines have the following two useful relationships. We have L prime C prime equals mu times epsilon, and we have G prime over C prime is equal to sigma over epsilon. So this is a pretty qualitative introduction to transmission lines. In the next video, we'll begin formulating equations to analyze lines and also do some examples. Thanks for watching.